Disney Pixar's Lightyear goes to infinity and beyond with a timey-wimey plot full of twists and turns. Wondering how it all connects to Toy Story? Dying to discuss that major plot hole? Keep watching for the ending of Lightyear Explained. Warning, major spoilers straight ahead. Every hero has a villain, and in the case of Buzz Lightyear, that villain has always been Zerg, the bullhorned, purple-clad conqueror with the tri-barreled plasma blaster. Lightyear brings a big twist to the bad guy in the film's third act by revealing that this instance of Zerg is actually Buzz himself. Specifically, he's an old version of Buzz from a split timeline who journeyed far into the future and then back again using advanced technology. Old Buzz's plan is simple. He wants to use the Crystallic Fusion Drive to go back in time before the Star Command ship ever even crashed, thereby erasing what he sees as his greatest failure. As it's explained in the film, the first time Buzz successfully achieved hyperspeed, he returned home expecting a hero's welcome. Instead, he was brought up on charges for going against Star Command orders. In a daring escape, he flies over a hundred years further into the future and discovers a ship that holds the Zerg armor and robots. Using the advancements available in that far-flung future, he's able to travel back in time, but only as far as his original hyperspeed voyage. That leap back in time creates a paradox of two buzzes and gives the younger Space Ranger a shot at redemption. Obviously, Zerg being Buzz is a bit of a retcon. In the Buzz Lightyear of Star Command cartoon, the villain was simply an evil emperor. However, the twist brings an interesting new layer to the story, turning Buzz's obsession with success into a dark alternate plotline. As it turns out, Buzz Lightyear's greatest enemy is actually his own worst self. One of the biggest themes in Lightyear is obsession. It's explored early on in the montage of Buzz's mini hyperspeed test runs. In each attempt, he moves four years into the future, returning home each time to a colony that has advanced and changed in many ways. Sensors indicate you've missed four birthdays. It's one of the film's most powerful moments because it shows just how far Buzz is willing to go to achieve what he views as success and redemption. He has friends on the planet, at least one anyway, but that's not enough to make him want to stay. He values his legacy and his reputation more than he values his own happiness. And he willingly blows through almost a century of time while hardly aging at all. The revelation of Zerg's true identity puts Buzz's obsessive nature into stark perspective. The younger character sees his older self in all of his sadness and regret, a man who was so fixated on making his life perfect that he forgot to actually live it. The lesson that younger Buzz ultimately takes away is that obsession always leads down a dark path. He realizes that it's better to live in the world you've got than to spend every waking hour thinking about what you could have done differently. After all, despite all your effort and futuristic technology, you can't really change the past. For a hot second, it looks like Buzz might take Zerg up on his offer to help him undo their previous timeline. It's the thing that Buzz has been trying to do for so long, fix his mistake, restore his reputation, and set things right as he understands them. But then he realizes the magnitude of that decision. He realizes that his best friend would have never had the life she ended up living, a life filled with laughter and love. Her children and grandchildren would never be born, and countless others would befall a similar fate. For all of Buzz's desire to see his mistake mended, he realizes that the stakes of turning back the clock are too great. Zerg doesn't like that kind of thinking, though, and they too engage in an extended battle that ultimately ends in the villain's defeat. The implicit message here is a pretty heavy one, but also a simple one. You can't ever undo your failures, and that's just part of life. With enough time, mistakes just become part of history. They become a part of your legacy, which isn't necessarily good or bad. Would Buzz and Alicia have lived happier lives if they'd never crashed on the planet in the first place? It's impossible to know. We all only get one life, the movie seems to say, and it's better to enjoy it, heirs and all, than to lament some other life that might have been. When Buzz jumps forward in time and discovers the presence of Zerg's robots, he teams up with the only folks he can find to fight back. His best friend Alicia's granddaughter Izzy, a nervous man named Mo, and an elderly ex-convict named Darby. Together with the assistance of Buzz's robot companion, Sox, the team attempts to take Zerg down, but they hit a number of pitfalls along the way. Many of the problems that the team ends up facing are products of their own mistakes, a recurring theme in the movie. Mo's nervousness leads him to make some errors, Darby is a little too gung-ho, and Izzy's excitability causes her to mess things up a couple of times. And yet, in true Pixar fashion, 
those apparent faults end up being turned into assets by the end of the movie. Whether it's Moe's love of the surrender switch on his Space Ranger suit, or Darby's ability to make anything explode, the qualities that make each character eccentric and odd are also the ones that help them get the job done. It's not exactly a new idea for a children's movie to espouse, not even within the Pixar pantheon, but it still works quite well in Lightyear. Buzz's hyperfixation on a single idea of the right way to do things is broken by the oddities of those around him. As it turns out, diversity of perspective and experience ends up being a positive attribute for the team. Who would have thought? You're <laughs> mocking me, aren't you? Yeah, but in a supportive way. After successfully stopping Zerg's evil plan and destroying his ship, Buzz and company return to the colony, where they're welcomed as heroes. Buzz explains that he feels okay about never managing to get the Star Command ship back into space, because he realizes that they've all made a home together on this strange alien world. The perseverance and determination of the other human inhabitants seems to inspire him, and he takes solace particularly in the company of his new friends. Up until this point, Buzz never seems content to sit down and actually live his life. That may be in part because of his natural personality, one that doesn't lend itself easily to building relationships, but it's also implied to be connected to his sense of self-worth. In the middle of the movie, Buzz shares how he was a major screw-up at Space Ranger Boot Camp and that he planned to quit after the first week. He was eventually convinced to stay by Commander Hawthorne, but it's clear that he still carries that sense of inferiority with him. Maybe Buzz never thought he was worthy of a normal and happy life. Maybe he always believed that he had to accomplish great things in order to accept joy for himself. Fortunately, his interactions with Izzy, Darby, and Mo seem to break him out of that harmful stupor. He recognizes that all people are deserving of love, happiness, and second chances, which allows him to finally accept that he does have a home. Lightyear is a solid movie, but it isn't without its faults, and there's an especially big one at the end of the movie in the form of a gaping plot hole. Ooh, that's a lot of space. All of the action of the third act, and much of the movie prior to that point as well, revolves around the crystallic fusion drive that Buzz creates with Sox's formula. He's shown synthesizing the crystal at one point in the film, and he carries the same one through everything else. Zerg tries to use it to go back in time, but Buzz manages to swipe it back. Unfortunately, the MacGuffin shatters during Buzz's atmospheric re-entry, leaving all the humans still stranded on the planet. Buzz says it's okay that he couldn't complete his mission, but here's the thing, he could. Sox still has the formula that resulted in the perfect fusion crystal, and there are surely still enough resources on the planet to synthesize a duplicate. At least, there are no claims to the contrary. That means that Star Command could theoretically leave the planet if they just made another crystal but nobody even entertains that idea. Maybe there's some other obstacle standing in their way, or some other reason why the crystal can't be recreated, but it's never properly explained in the film. This is a bit of a perplexing plot hole, but fortunately, it's not enough to ruin the movie, or its overall message. Though he doesn't get the rest of the humans back into space, Buzz does head up a major new initiative for Star Command at the end of Lightyear. Due to his heroics, he's commissioned by Commander Burnside to head up the New Universe Protection Unit, a resurgence of the Space Ranger program meant to expand the influence and safety of the Galactic Alliance's burgeoning colony. Buzz is given the chance to pick his personal squad from the best of the best, but he instead declares that he already has his crew. Decked out in a new generation of Space Ranger suits, Buzz, Moe, Darby, and Izzy set out on their next mission. They may still be a little ragtag, but they're battle-tested and stronger than ever. In the first Toy Story, Buzz says that he's stationed in the Gamma Quadrant of Sector 4. That's exactly where he's headed at the end of Lightyear. Finally. The ending scene of them blasting off into space together could be the setup for a sequel, or even a series on Disney+. Given what happens in the film's post credit scenes, those possibilities seem even more likely. The first post credit scene comes after the initial round of credits and shows Commander Burnside sitting in his office. Through the window, you can see a giant big fly fly up to the colony's perimeter and promptly get zapped by the laser shield. Burnside chuckles and mutters, laser shield, to himself, clearly proud of his favorite creation. The second scene takes place after another round of credits and shows Zerg's robotic exosuit floating in space. The screen zooms in on the evil Emperor's face and shows his eyes flash back to life, then it quickly cuts to black. Clearly, this is a potential setup for a sequel series or film. 
which might see Buzz Lightyear and his gang doing more proper planet hopping in a campaign against the villain. Of course, it also could just be a fun tease that never comes to anything. Only time will tell. Sitting in the theater, it's easy to assume that the Zerg scene is the last bit of proper content in the movie, but that's not quite true. If you continue to watch through all the company logos, you'll eventually be rewarded with one last Easter egg. Derek, the Star Command robot working with Izzy, Moe, and Darby early in the film, is shown still working on a route for the team to take. The bot finally figures it all out, only to turn around and see that the whole team is gone. There are a lot of themes at play in Lightyear. The value of diverse experience, the importance of accepting differences, and the problems inherent to obsessive behavior are some of the most obvious ones. There are also some less explored themes, like Zerg's resistance to different ways of thinking. When Buzz starts to disagree with his plan to turn back the clock, Zerg angrily complains that his younger counterpart has so many new ideas. For him, there's clearly only one way to do things, the right way. And yet, that way would bring immense pain and suffering if taken to completion. Lightyear isn't just about how we can't change the past. It's about how we can't stop change. Buzz finds it bizarre that 100 years after his own original era, sandwiches have meat on the outside and bread on the inside. I am so sorry to hear that. It's a silly example, but it drives home the point that the world will change whether you like it or not. You can sit around complaining about how things were better in the old days, or you can accept the way things are now. Still, Lightyear shows that in every era, there are constants. Love, family, and community. Embracing those and not worrying about the details is the way to find real happiness. If you instead spend all your energy being angry about the way the world is changing, you might catch yourself turning into a Zerg. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about Lightyear are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.